how that has made a lot of transformation um, in my classroom. So to start with, I am not out here because I am a Model 4 member. That is given. Actually, my old SLD, not old, did put me on an improvement plan because I was such a mess. Um, and my first four months of being a Teach for America was, in my opinion, terrible. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about it, and some of you may um, resonate with this, I was really overwhelmed with my school responsibilities, with observations, with Teach for America stuff, all this stuff. I was really overwhelmed. I got sick a lot from stress. Um, and to be honest, I thought about dropping out of Teach for America, and I questioned whether I was going to be here a second year. And I hope that's not too real for you guys. But that's where I was. It was not a real picture for at least me in Teach for America. But I am still here, and I'm really happy with the direction that my class is going in this year. And I think more than anything, my story is a testament to how much a year can change. Um, so if you're struggling today, I hope that um, you can take something from my story and uh, use it for yourself. Um, so one thing that has transformed me as a teacher uh, is redefining what success is in my class. I've heard it said that in life, we often think that we know what success is because we are told that success is getting a house or a car or having money. So when we talk about success, we immediately regurgitate those answers without really thinking to ourselves, what does success mean to me? And I think it's a very similar thing with teaching. We are told a lot about what a successful teacher looks like without really asking ourselves that question, what does being a successful teacher um, to me. Um, sorry. So what I did was I decided to define what being successful would like for me as a classroom. And the greatest thing that happened out of defining how I was as a teacher was that the idea of a perfect student and the idea of a perfect teacher kind of dissolved. And what that opened up for me was the opportunity to look at what was important to me. Um, and instead of trying to have a perfect class and to be a perfect person, it was a day-to-day -day value on progress. So what I valued ultimately was progress. One example of how I defined success in my class was having moments of connection with my students that went outside of my content area. So it was important for me not just to look at what my content looked like, but to make personal connections with my students. So I told my students that I was meeting here today, and they were really excited about it, and they'd be like, this is why I'm so nervous, and I don't know why, because I'm not nervous talking to them. But for some reason, I'm nervous talking to them. But I told my students that I was meeting here, and I asked them to help me prepare for this, and I asked them a series of personal questions about their experiences with teachers. I had them describe what the best teacher they ever had was like, and I had them describe what the worst teacher tell me about what do you want teachers to know about them as students and about them personally. So this assignment basically started off as a new house. But when I started getting responses from my students and seeing the way that they lit up in our discussion, they were so excited to have somebody listen to what they had to say. And it was the first time that I think I really realized, especially with my school and the discipline and how long they have to be in class, it was the first time that anybody had really taken time to ask them their opinion about education, which is affecting their life, and they don't really have a voice in it. So in that moment, I basically tossed my lesson plan aside and made a spontaneous lesson plan out of that, where the entire discussion um, generated what we did for the rest of the class. So what was nice about it was that I was happy, by the end of class, my students had generated a plan that we were actually going to work on this year for <coughs> choosing one thing that we want to change in our school. And I told them, because it was spontaneous and last minute, that I don't know what it's going to look like, but the kids chose that they wanted to change um, the start time of their school. And that was something that was really important to them. I said, I don't know if we can't change it, I don't know what that's going to look like. 
and being candid with myself and being able to be vulnerable, the big impact that I received was the relationship, the deep relationship that I got to have with my students. So when I think about how often I thought about quitting Teach for America and I did not ever stop, um, and it's really real every day, the thing that I realized that has kept me here is the amazing relationships that I have with people. I had an amazing CNA, Joel is an amazing MCLD. I have a lot of Teach for America family and amazing coworkers. And it was those relationships that really made all the difference and gave me the strength and the drive that I needed to still be here. In, in the midst of everything that was going on, I can definitely pinpoint the fact that I had people who were supporting me to help me make it through everything that I was struggling with. And, and I think it's the same for our kids, that when it comes to different things that they're trying to accomplish when they're struggling, I really honestly believe that it is those deep relationships that are going to help them stay with our subject matter and stay in our class and stay with us ultimately. Um, and kids genuinely know that I care about them. And it's tell me that I care about them. And it is absolutely true. And for my second year, it was important for me to establish meaningful relationships with them because in the midst of all of the madness and the mess that's teaching, I have found that the one thing that keeps me going is my relationship with my kids. When nothing else makes sense, it is my love for them that pushes me to better for them. And I think it's very difficult to be able to do that if you don't have that kind of relationship with your students and you don't really know them that well. Um, so in pushing to be better, it's great for us, this is, this is me personally, it's great for us to say one day all children and blah blah blah, yeah, that's great. Um, and <laughs> I only say that because I think it, it's very generic, and it's only generic if there's no name behind it, if there's no face behind it, if there's no story behind it. So for me, when I say one day all children, it's not some lofty idealism um, when I say it. When I say one day all children, what I really mean is one day for Carlos, he's going to be able to be a police officer. Or one day for Destiny, she's going to be able to analyze that paragraph better than she's ever analyzed it before. Or one day for Destiny, or one day for Edwin, or one day for Nadia. And all of those names mean nothing to you, but they mean a lot to me. And that's really the point, is making what you do really real to you. So in asking yourself, what does a successful teacher look like? Honestly, answering that for yourself and saying for yourself, what does it mean to be a successful teacher? And having a real connection to your students um, and being able to be vulnerable with them. Uh, so, in doing that, your job on a daily basis has genuine meaning. It's not just something that you show up to do, it's actually meaningful for you. So, in conclusion, I'm going to repeat some words of wisdom that a veteran co worker told me during our first year. Uh, just do your best. That was the best thing that she ever told me and it set me free in a lot of ways by not having to be perfect. It's just showing up and doing your best and not focusing on what you're not doing right, but focusing on the areas that you come from and not your failures. Because I can guarantee you at this point in time there is something that you are doing today that you are better at than you were about four 